Welcome to Electra Online. Here's a problem that can really wrap you around the axle unless you can see through it to find the easy way to do the problem. And that's the trick on this problem. So let's see what this is all about. It deals with kinetic energy and capacitor plates. It says that an electron with kinetic energy K1 enters between parallel plates on a capacitor at an angle alpha with the plates. It leaves the plates at an angle beta with kinetic energy K2 then the ratio of kinetic energies K1 to K2 will be, and we got four possible answers. They didn't give us a drawing, but let's put a drawing together to get a better picture of what's going on. So here we have capacitor plates. Let's say on one side it's positively charged. On the other side we have negatively charged. An electron enters the plate at some angle alpha, and with some kinetic energy, let's write it Ke1. And the electron goes through, and by the time it exits the capacitor plates, it's now moving at a different angle relative to the plates, call it beta, with some kinetic energy, call it kinetic energy 2. And yes, this is indeed an electron. And the question is, what is the ratio of those two kinetic energies? K1 divided by K2 is equal to question mark. Hmm. So the way to think about it initially you would say well kinetic energy 1 is equal to 1 half times the mass times the velocity squared but there's two components to the velocity so this would be velocity initial in the x-direction squared plus velocity initial initially in the y-direction squared and so this would be 1 half m times V initial times the, and we have the angle alpha, so that would be the cosine of the angle alpha squared plus V initial times the, and that would be the sine of alpha squared, like this. And for kinetic energy 2, this would be 1 half the mass times V final in the x direction squared plus V final in the y direction squared, which is one half times the mass times the final times the cosine of beta. Uh, that's a terrible looking beta, let me try again. There we go, that's better. Beta squared plus V final times the sine of beta quantity squared, like this. All right, and now we would probably want to find the ratio of those two. And now we are dealing with kind of a trigonometric mess. But, when we think about it this way, well, wait a minute, the forces only act in one direction. The forces only act in the y direction. There's no force in the x direction. And if there's no force in the x direction, there cannot be any change in the velocity in the x direction. Which means that the velocity initially in the x direction must equal the velocity final in the x direction. All right. Which means that the velocity initial in the x direction would be one half m v initial. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, I don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. I'm going the wrong direction. I'm not there yet. Uh, velocity initial in the x direction is right here. So that would be that v initial times the cosine of alpha must equal v final times the in the x direction, which would be v final times the cosine of beta. All right, which means that the ratio of V initial divided by V final is equal to the cosine of beta divided by the cosine of alpha. Now since I know that, then I can say that the kinetic energy initial divided by kinetic energy final is equal to one half m v initial squared divided by one half m v final squared, which means I get rid of the one the one, one half m, and v initial divided by v final would be well the square root the square of this divided by the square of that. So this would be equal to the cosine square uh, square not cube square of beta divided by the cosine square of alpha. And so the ratio of those kinetic energies is equal to this ratio. Is that one of the answers? 
It shows cosine, and it looks like B is the answer, right? Cosine squared B. Yes, it is. So I would vote for answer B because that is what I got here. And notice the trick. The trick was to realize that the force only acts in one direction. It doesn't act in the X direction. That means the initial velocity in the X direction must equal the final velocity in the X direction. That means that this initial velocity in the X direction must equal the final velocity in the X direction. That means these must be equal. The ratio of the initial to the final velocity is this. And since the kinetic energies is 1 half mv squared, we can then go ahead and cancel out 1 half m's. The ratio of v initial squared divided by v final squared can then be found by taking this and squaring it. And that's the answer B that we're looking for. And that is how it's done.